The Our Coast project looks at safeguarding coastal energy generation and supply. We're interested in the energy sector because a lot of its infrastructure is on the coast. Using models of the coast, we are exploring how beaches and estuaries could respond to changing rates of sea level rise and storm conditions. Climate change may threaten the coastal energy sector, as changes in sediment movement could cause sediment build-up around inflow and outflow pipes. Changes in water temperature may also influence the effectiveness of cooling water in power stations. The predominant threats from climate change to um, the energy infrastructure in the coastal zone come from storms, from extreme events that happen every now and again, but also from future sea level rise. They're not independent threats, they're coupled. With sea level rise, it means that damaging storms are likely to become more frequent in the future. The reason why we focused on the coast is that there's an array of energy infrastructure located in the coastal zone. At the same time, there's also a whole host of different activities that are located in the coast. Industry, transport, people, tourism. So what we find as a result of what we do in the Arcos project is of relevance to a much wider set of stakeholders. Coastal modelling ties in very closely with the coastal monitoring in that once we've captured the data of how the coast has changed, we need to understand why it's changed and the models can represent that change and help us understand how it might change into the future. Sea level rise is very important in terms of its impacts on the coast, but as decision makers I think we struggle with it and communities certainly struggle with it more than us. They'll go down to the coast day to day and see the changes, but it's more difficult for them to understand what the context, what the importance is of those changes over the next hundred years. In National Grid, we, we, we got together with the Energy Networks Association. We came up with a documentation which details how we will carry out risk assessments for flooding and what level of protection we put in place. That details, uh, that directs us to do a one in a thousand level of protection on the site. The provision of the flood depths, the flood flows, and the longer term climate change, sea level rise aspects of the data gives us an element of when we can actually start to think about moving away from protection and relocation. So it gives us a long-term spla uh, strategic planning application tool. The challenge to managing future shoreline position and coastal conditions is the uncertainty in knowing what the future climate might be like. Modelling changes in the coastal environment requires good historic data so we can test our models against known trends and events and then we can try and suggest what may happen in the future. The best check that you can make in any model output to, is to compare it with data. Uncertainty in coastal model outputs is one of the hardest things to, uh, to communicate, but the best way to do it is to give some limits. You have to say how, how, what's the minimum and the maximum limit that you think that is possible according to your predictions, and, th and the best way to get this prediction is to do ensemble runs. The model that I have applied is called FBCOM. We are going from tens of kilometers in the open ocean to about 50 or 25, cent 10, 25 meters in the coast. The time scales that this model cover are basically from few days to a few years. What we use it for as well is to get different scenarios where you can use climate change ideas and put it into your models. Extreme water levels around the UK are caused by a combination of factors. First of all, we need a big tide. And here in the UK, we have some of the biggest tides in the world. And then the effect of storms creates what's called a storm surge. The low pressure and very high winds during our typical winter weather um, push huge amounts of water towards the coast. The UK has a very effective early warning system for predicting coastal flooding. One of the biggest challenges for us to remain resilient against climate change is, is mean sea level rise. There are two main mechanisms contributing to global sea level rise. With warming of our pl planet, ocean is expanding, increasing volume of the ocean, and the second mechanism is a contribution from ice loss from glaciers and ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica. Over the past hundred years, we have tide gauge observations from different locations along the coastline of UK, and we know that sea level changes are not uniform, 
and there are locations where there is a fast and slow sea level rise. The common approach to project sea level rise is to provide simulation from, from process-based model for each individual component of sea level rise. It's thermal expansion, contribution from glaciers, contribution from ice sheets. Extreme waves around the UK are generated by extreme winds. So we're looking for a storm event. It might be a local storm. It might be storms out in the Atlantic which generate swell, which can travel towards the UK, as well as that locally generated waves. The Met Office um, generates um, daily weather forecasts, as most people know, and of course they will include uh, storm warnings. We use models to identify the future patterns of storms and waves which will occur. This means that we are reliant on the accuracy of those climate models to generate uh, future patterns of storms and waves. Changing storm tracks um, could mean that the wave conditions are increased or decreased relative to the location at present. Free Jess's role in researching adaption of the coast to climate change focuses on questions like what if the wave climate changes, what if the shore face changes in any particular way. Coastal evolution models simulate the long-term change in coastal form over a number of years up to millennia. To assess the sensitivity of a coastline's changes in wave climate, we run the model multiple times with lots of different wave climates going into it. We represent engineered structures within the model. We run a minimum of two simulations, one without the engineered structure and one with the engineered structure. We then assess how that engineered structure has influenced the coastline. We can assess the impact of a soft intervention, that is a body of sand that has been added to the shore face. Uh, and we can also look at different shapes of sand and different volumes of sand. To enable predictions of coastal change, we feed lots of data into the model. We feed wave climate in, we look at how resistant the coast is to erosion, how much material is lost out to sea, how much material remains on the beach. Useful model outputs for coastal communities in the energy sector include maps of sediment movement, circulation, water temperature and also areas of erosion and flood risk. Future shoreline positions and beach width can be produced, identifying where and when engineered defence or relocation of people and businesses are needed.